Back here on Titans Talk, breaking down what was a 12-7 loss to the Arizona Cardinals yesterday. Titans going to have to stew on this all week long. They're out in Arizona practicing this week in presumably warmer weather and cutting down on their travel issues going to San Francisco for the weekend. They'll go up there on Friday and then play that game on Sunday, a 325 kick over on News Channel 5. Taking your phone calls tonight, we got lines open, 737-7767. Your frustration level watching yesterday's game, and do you feel yesterday was kind of the blip on the radar for a team that has figured out how to win those games throughout the vast majority of the season, or is that real cause for concern heading into the final three weeks of the year? And also, your level of concern with Marcus Mariota right now after two more interceptions yesterday. Curious on all those thoughts and other topics you want to hit on with the Titans as well. Again, 737 plus the number. Jan has called in. Jan, you are next up. Good evening. Hey, man. How are you doing? Doing great. Thanks for the call. Hey, um, I, I think the Titans are on the right track. The defense is definitely doing their job. I think Marcus Mariota is is a good quarterback. I think he, he just played so attentive. You know, you could see him almost aiming his passes. I, I think he, he's got to let go. And, and, you know, when you throw that ball, it's got to be a second nature thing. It's got to be something that, that you don't think about before you do. You know, I played football to the college level, and if, if, if you aren't getting that feel, I think the boy's trying so hard that he's messing up. Yeah, look, I think you're absolutely right about that in the sense that when things go bad and you, you want it so badly, you then try and overcompensate, and then that makes you tight and makes you not just go out there and perform. I think that could be an issue here. A couple other things that really stand out to me, Jan, is one, Marcus Mariota, I think we forget because he was ready for the start of the season. He broke his leg last year, about right now, and that was a six, seven-month injury by most accounts. Now, he worked his tail off to get back and be a part of some of the off-season workouts, but not many, and he was ready to go by – training camp which was huge for him just to get on the field but I think we're seeing the same thing with Derek Carr who had the same injury on the same day by the way everybody's talking about both of those quarterbacks taking a step back this season well what's the common denominator there after fantastic years last year the awful injury in the offseason and I think what you see is both of those guys had to spend so much time working on their body just to get healthy to be able to be on the field that they maybe didn't do some of the things you normally would do to help you take that step the next year. Then, unfortunately, Mariota had the hamstring injury early on in the year. I just don't think we've seen a healthy guy all season long, and then you're not getting the running game on top of that. The wide receivers haven't stepped up in the way we thought, and so now all of a sudden you're throwing a ton onto the shoulders of that guy who's not completely healthy, and I just don't think right now he's able to live up to that type of pressure. I agree with that, man, 100%. I, I, I love the guy, though. I think he's going to pan out. I think he, if, if he gets, if he gets to where he's letting go and releasing and throwing that ball and and gets a few completions, I, I think he'll get over the hump. I, I tend to agree with you, Jan, and thank you for the call. It bothered me yesterday to see people, and I get fans emotional. And you're certainly allowed to be that way. But it bothered me yesterday when I looked on Twitter and I would get the messages about Marcus Mariota. And I got a message from a couple people wanting to bench Mariota. And that just to me seems like a complete overreaction to what you're watching. I mean, do we not remember the Miami game when Mariota couldn't play? Or the second half in Houston when Matt Castle and the offense were just a turnover machine? This is clearly a better team and a better offense with Marcus Mariota on the field. Now, look, there's a lot of things that you can complain about. You can complain about the run game. You can complain about the play calling. You can complain about Mariota and how he's performed to this point. But I think to just sort of throw him out with the criticisms or, or want to bench him or I saw somebody else say that they wanted to draft a quarterback because Mariota definitely isn't the answer – I mean, think back to a year ago. A year ago, he had 26 touchdowns and nine interceptions. That is breathtakingly good stuff. 
Now, this isn't just all of a sudden a different guy. He's fully capable of doing that. He's already done it in the NFL. The things that I think the Titans have to be worried about in a big picture sense here, when you're talking about Marcus Mariota, is now this is his third year in the league, and he's had to deal with the injury thing. Now, they've all been different. He had some knee issues in his first year when he just got hit every play behind a terrible offensive line. They had the fluke broken leg incident. It was leaving the pocket last year against Jacksonville. And now this year it's been coming back from that and a hamstring injury. Yesterday maybe tweaked a knee early on in the game. Shoulder issues as well. He just hasn't been 100%. And none of it's sort of recurring or chronic, which I think they point to to say he's not an injury-prone guy. But you're asking him to be a dual-threat quarterback in the NFL, which that's his most effective way to play is being a guy who can run with reckless abandon, get on the perimeter and run away from people and do it with his legs as well as his arm. I mean, that's him at his best. But can you realistically throw Marcus Mariota on the field 16 games a year playing that style and expect him to be able to go and be efficient and effective that way, taking the pounding that comes with that? I don't know. I mean, I think that's a real question that the Titans are going to have to grapple with this offseason because it seems to be popping up again. Maybe maybe he's able to go again. Maybe he's going to play 15 of the 16 games, you hope, this season. But if he has to play half of them at 75% because of the pounding he takes playing this style, maybe that's not a long-term answer. I don't know. They're going to have to address that. But I think the idea that when he gets this offseason under his belt and he can look at some of the struggles from this year and he can get himself fully healthy and then train on top of that, I expect Marcus Mariota to take the leap next year that you expected this year. I think this has a lot to do with health when it comes to him. But the other thing for him, too, is where are the guys stepping up around him? We've talked about the run game and the offensive line. But there is no wide receiver that has emerged on this team. Eric Decker, I think, is a really good player and should be utilized more by the Titans, but he hasn't had the impact that you'd hope. Corey Davis, because of the injury and other things, hasn't had the impact that you'd hope a top-five pick would have offensively to this point. Rashard Matthews has been the leader of that group, and he's been largely consistent, but injuries the last two weeks, and then yesterday he comes back, and he didn't look like himself. And not to pick on Rashard, because again, he's the leading receiver on this team, and largely he's been good. But yesterday, that first interception, when the Titans are just outside of the red zone, and they're looking to add on to a 7-6 to six lead at that point, that's a post pattern where given the defense, the wide receiver is always, 100% of the time, supposed to go inside the face of the defensive back. That's where Marcus Mariota threw the ball. And if Matthews makes the right read and route adjustment there, it's probably a catch down around the five-yard line, even into that coverage. It's probably a catch. And the Titans have first and goal. Who knows? They probably punch it in from there. And now all of a sudden it's a 14-6 game. You feel completely different about the game at that point. Instead, I don't know what he saw, but he stays outside. Tremont Williams comes inside, makes the pick. It costs the Titans points, and obviously the Cardinals come back and win the game. That's your best receiver who didn't do a very simple thing that the play was designed to do and his read was designed to do. That's a huge mistake. And if that's your best receiver, where can the trust level be with the other guys for Mariota? It can't be high. And I think you see that on the second pick. That's a play with three routes. A shot play for Eric Decker. Delaney Walker coming out. And then you have kind of a delayed route from Philip Superna. Superna is your safety valve there. And he was open. The shot plays to Decker, though, and he had one-on-one coverage going to the outside, and actually the safety slips on the play. He was wide open. If you throw that, that's going to be a big play. But Mariota had moved off to him because he's not getting a ton of time in the pocket, and he has to stand back there and make these decisions now on a shortening clock. 
He moved off of it. He saw Walker. Walker's been the go-to guy that consistently gets open. And he tried to force it into a tight window. Unfortunately for him, he didn't see the linebacker there. But that's the type of thing that I think you're seeing right now because who else do you trust? I mean, the Indianapolis game, he threw it into quadruple coverage to Walker. It was a perfect throw, as good of a ball as anybody can throw. And it went for a big game. But that's what you have to do now with Walker because he's double and triple covered every time off the line. You have to be perfect to fit it in there. But I think right now Marcus Mariota feels like his opportunity to be perfect with Delaney Walker is better than his opportunity to connect with some of these other receivers. And that's really troubling for this offense right now. Back to the phones we go. 737-7767 is the number. We still got lines open for you. Let's go to Mike. Mike, thanks for the call. You're next up here on Titans Talk. Hello, Mike. Mike, are you there? All right. Apparently, Mike is not there. 737-7767 is the number. We will take your calls here on the program, but let's go to some of the highlights from yesterday. Look at the lowlights, if you will, from the Titans and Cardinals in the desert. First ever trip for the Titans to University of Phoenix Stadium. Marcus Mariota intercepted right there by Tremont Williams. That's that play we were talking about. Cost the Titans a chance to go up 14-6. Phil Dawson, though, shanks a field goal there, so the Titans remained up by one at that point. But then here comes Chad Williams, jet sweep. Cardinals really got the running game going in the second half, which was a frustration for a Titans offense. It's huge for that. They do get a field goal there, take the lead in there. There's the second pick. Josh Bynes just simply, Mariota didn't see him. Throws a second pick of the game, career high 14th of the season. Still one more chance. Here's fourth and 10, and people are talking about this play too because that's a Dory Jackson, a quarterback on the field, and the ball's thrown short of the sticks. They talk about a Dory, and look, he's had a big impact on the offense when he's been able to come in because of his big play ability. And he's averaged like 20 yards a touch this season when he's been on the field. But fourth and 10 in that situation, don't you have to go to one of your receivers? And does that say what I was just alluding to? That there just isn't a whole lot of faith in the receiving core right now? I don't know. I mean, Mike Malarkey defended that today and said that, look, we, that's a play we believe has got big play capability. We've run it before, and it oftentimes works in practice. Well, that's a play yesterday that if Adoree Jackson even catches the ball, gets tackled shy of the first down marker on fourth and ten. I, I just think you have to throw to the six there. I didn't like the play calling late in the game. A lot of people believe or share that, that they didn't like the play calling in the game yesterday. At times this year, I think Terry rubisky has gotten a bad rap for the play calls. I, I think... At times, he's dialed up the right calls, and people just haven't executed. And to a degree, some of that's there yesterday. I mean, Rashard Matthews runs that route right. It's first and goal inside the five-yard line, and it's not an interception in the first half. Taewon Taylor down the middle of the field on kind of a post skinny post route. In the middle of the field right over the Cardinals logo. Mariota has him. Not the best throw he's ever had, but he has him. Taylor just doesn't get his head around in time to see it. If he sees that ball and catches it, it may be a touchdown. It's certainly a massive gain that sets you up for points on a likely field goal attempt, but it may have been a touchdown at that point of the game. Titans could have had a 14 to nothing or 14 to three lead at the half if they connect there. And how different does the second half look if that's the case? But instead, you've got a rookie receiver who doesn't get his head around in time and a ball that is basically right here, he doesn't catch. When he could catch it on the run and go. I mean, those types of plays where you don't execute, that's the difference in games in the NFL. And there's other games you can point to that. Cleveland, a couple touchdown opportunities where the throw wasn't there or a guy didn't catch it. You've got a drop touchdown against Indianapolis. You've got a drop touchdown against Pittsburgh. There, there's a bunch of examples this year where the play call was fine. 
the Titans just haven't executed it, and it, it goes everywhere. It's the offensive line, it's the running backs, it's Mariota, it's the receivers, it's Delaney Walker, your all pro tight end. Uh, there are not enough fingers to point around to all the people who deserve some blame for where the Titans are at offensively. But that being said, yesterday, I thought Terry Rubisky called a really poor game. I thought there were a bunch of mistakes yesterday. I thought the play calling lacked imagination. And when the receivers weren't getting open on their own in the second half of the game and with no running game, you really needed the passing game to step up, there wasn't much imagination to getting guys involved. Uh, there wasn't much there. And so it just became, could Mariota fit it into tight windows? And he couldn't. He finished the game with, I think, nine incompletions in a row. Couple of interceptions in the second half. The offense had just three first downs after halftime. I don't care who you're playing. That is not going to get it done. And it certainly did not yesterday. Back to the phones we go now. Let's say hello to William. William, good evening. Hey, good evening. Yeah, go ahead, William. You're on there. Yeah, you know, I've been a uh, uh, Tennessee uh, Titan fan since I started watching football. I'm from Africa, so football is a soccer. But the way they've been playing is so worse. Sometimes I, I get up in the morning to watch the game, and they've never been playing a good game. They look like in a practice they're playing. They have a good wide receiver, a good running back, and a good quarterback. But when they go to the field, it's just so worse to watch. That game yesterday was the worst game they played. I don't care what it is. I never seen a, you know, Marcus throwing a, a deep ball. So that opened the running game. And they want to run their game when other teams know, and they stab them up. It's worse. They need to change it. Yeah, I agree with you, William. I think they need to open this up more. We appreciate the call. Uh, they've got to open up this offense more. They've got to be more creative. They've got to try and find ways to get receivers open. They've got to tr find ways to get DeMarco Murray and Derrick Henry more touches, even if the running game isn't what you want it to be on a Sunday. They just have to do that. They need to make things easier when things are very difficult. And yesterday, they didn't do that. They just tried to force it in and force Mariota to be perfect on a day he wasn't perfect, clearly, in a tough situation. One thing I really want to see, final three games of the year, I want to see them take some of those shot plays that William was just talking about, and the guy to do it is Corey Davis. We haven't seen a ton of them because of the injury, but here's one thing you saw yesterday. You saw him run a third down and four route at two yards. And he caught it, and he was short of the first down marker by two yards. That's going to come with rookie wide receivers who are playing their fifth game or sixth game in the NFL. Remember, he, he's not even halfway into this season because of the injury. You're going to miss some routes. You're going to miss some depths and some of the fundamental things with Corey Davis right now. You just are because of the youth factor. But what you have in Corey Davis is you have a freakish athlete who knows how to go up and make a catch and make a play isn't afraid to go one-on-one -on -one with somebody and go make a play on a jump ball. So let's see some of those. Some of his best plays this year of when they've just kind of thrown it up and he wasn't necessarily open, but he's made a play. So let's see that a few times. Uh, once or twice a game, take a shot to Corey Davis and see if he can make a play for you. I mean, if he can make a 30-yard catch for you once a game, that probably buys you points. And in yesterday's game, when it's a 12 seven type of game, you know, one or two field goals completely changes the complexion of the game. Not just the outcome, but probably the complexion of that game. If you extend that lead a little bit more, the Cardinals can't play with the same game plan they had in the second half where they started on the, on the ground. If they're down a couple scores, they're passing more. And the Titans got after Gabbert all the time yesterday when passing was their focus. It's when they started running the ball that the pass rush came back a little bit and didn't get as much pressure on Gabbert. And that's when the Cardinals offense became more effective. So take a couple shot plays. See if you can buy yourself some free points or a cheap score 
here or there. That's the creativity I really want to see from Terry Rubisky and this Titans offense down the stretch. All right, we got to take a break here. We will come back. More of your phone calls. Lines are wide open right now if you want to get in on the program. 737-7767 is the number. Stay tuned. More Titans talk on the way after this on News Channel 5 Plus.